Welcome back to Outriders. In this video, I have yet another complaint about this game. I actually had a couple of people ask me to do this video, and I've been grinding for the last couple of days to get myself to tier 15, and whoop whoop, I finally managed to get there. I switched out from a firepower build. It turns out that firepower really does suck on a Devastator. It is possible to get to tier 15 using a firepower build, but it's going to take a lot of patience and just running expeditions over and over again getting everything you can to the max level with the best rolls it's not an easy time but i was lucky enough to get a three-piece legendary armor set i'll do a build video so that you guys can see the exact build i ran to complete tier 14 and get myself up to 15 the cost of things when you're at this level which is the it's the final tier of the entire end game the cost of stuff is ridiculous to take a legendary from level 49 to 50 is going to set you back 72,000 drop pod resources. And yes, I know you get like 30,000 for a gold tier 14. And if you can gold a tier 15, you get 74,000. So that's just one run. But you need to get your gear up there first in order to be able to actually run tier 15s at gold times. It's actually like... I'd say it's kind of balanced. It is irritating seeing that it costs that much. I think they should have done it so it costs the equivalent of a tier 14 gold. Because once you get the upgrade, you're then playing level 50, like against level 50 enemies and stuff in the final tier. The only thing you can do is just carry on upgrading stuff. So I don't think it should necessarily cost 72,000, but it does. If you go to Tiago the vendor and you're tier 15, each of the purples you can buy from him are going to cost you 42,600. And each of the legendaries you want to buy are going to cost 85,000 if you still have that elite offer there. So it's very, very expensive. I have one big problem with this whole expedition piece of shit. And that is Eye of the Storm. I've had a couple of people ask me to do a video for this and that's why I've been grinding. I've switched out my build entirely and I've listened to everyone saying... You've got to run Anomaly Power with a Devastator because their firepower just isn't good enough. And I tried my hardest. I got to tier 14 with firepower. Probably if I would have min-maxed everything completely, probably could have got to tier 15 with firepower. But there was just no point holding back and trying to do that because it would have taken me way longer than what it already has. And I mean, just you've got to give credit to the devs for doing such a good job at keeping the variety in the game. Like, you can do everything with whatever builds you want. You can put all these crazy builds and stuff together. I don't think so. There is nothing that is varied in this game. You are set to limited stuff. And they always said that people can test and we can feel powerful and all this sort of stuff. But the worst thing for it is you get to tier 15 and you unlock this amazing Eye of the Storm. And I've seen gameplay for it. And one of the bosses is Yagak. The final boss from the story comes over to the expeditions. Because, you know, they never created any new enemy factions or anything like that. They literally just copy-pasted stuff from the story into the endgame. There's nothing new. You even have Moloch on Frontline. But this is going to cost you drop-hod resources to jump into Eye of the Storm. You also have the Drought Palace, which I think is like... 200 resources or or something like that you've got Colosseum, which then costs then you have scorched lands which is 3200 drop pod resources and then i have the storm which is uh 40 000 40, 000 drop pod resources to initiate this expedition and the reason i'm complaining about that and i think it needs to be changed is because is the very final expedition, the one that everyone is trying to get to, I don't think there should be a cost to initiate these. The reason I don't think there should be a cost is because I've seen a comment after comment of people saying it's pretty much, unless you have the most perfect build or you're cheating, it's pretty much impossible to solo this with a gold time. I don't know many people that would have done it besides possibly the 1% of the top players in the world or whatever. But there is a very small amount of people and the developers said, yeah, it might be tough, but everything can be done solo. This apparently is near on impossible to do solo. But that's not my biggest problem. My biggest problem is if you disconnect 
for any reason at all, you are never refunded these drop pod resources that you have spent. So you get dashboarded, you get one of their server errors, anything like that, you don't get your drop pod resources back. If you go in there and you get, like, if you match made with someone or whatever, everyone gets kicked out from the group. Like, the whole game just closes down. The person who's paid that doesn't get their resources back. The game literally eats your resources. But what adds the icing on the cake for that is the fact that you're spending 40,000 drop pod resources for absolutely fucking nothing because you can play any other expedition on the game and have exactly the same experience because it doesn't change the loot, the enemies don't change or anything like that. It's literally the same as any other one, but because it's their top tier expedition, they've locked it behind the drop pod resource paywall. And yeah, that might not be real money or whatever, but it's 40,000. In order to get that, you have to do two tier 14 runs. And they have to be at least silver times. If you do two silvers, you've got enough to enter. If you do a gold, you still have to do another one on top. And you literally have no increased chance of getting legendaries or anything like that. It is exactly the same as any other expedition in this game. So why does this one, over any of the others, have a 40,000 entry fee? The least they could do is bump it up another 5 or 10% on the legendary chance. Or increase the rewards that you get from it. So keep the 25% for tier 15, because you also have to be tier 15 to do this Eye of the Storm. It doesn't unlock until tier 15. But what they could do, instead of having bronze, silver and gold times, they could have gold, platinum, diamond, or gold, iron, titanium, or, or something like that. And instead of having two, three, or four rewards that go based on the percentages, they could have five, six, seven, or, or something like that. If you're going to be charging drop pod resources, which is an end game currency, you have to give players something extra to do this. I cannot believe how lazy they have been with this game to simply copy paste bosses, simply just change the arena not give any extra benefit to the player, but have risks because of their cheap-ass P2P servers, I just, I think it's, I can't actually believe how much they're taking the piss with this. 40,000 to enter this expedition. If you disconnect, you lose it, and there is no extra benefit in terms of loot or anything like that, and it's near on impossible to solo for a gold time. I'm going to leave the video there, I want to know your thoughts and stuff in the comments, and I will see you in the next video. I hope you guys enjoyed it.